Make sure you guys stay to the end of this video if you want to learn how to destroy Islam. And if you are a Muslim, I want you to watch this whole video and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let's get right into it. Paul is lying. Paul is lying. He's a liar. Again, Luke is also lying. So even John is lying. Paul is lying. Luke is lying. John is lying. Only two are left. Matthew and Mark. Let me put them also a liar. Uh, excuse See, me. Matthew chapter one verse number seventeen. John Matthew chapter one verse number seventeen. Just, just let him finish this point, Sam. Okay, make sure you give him time because now he went on tangents because I want to discuss his arguments. Ma but make Ma sure, yeah. Ma All right, Sam. So how do you yeah. respond to these points? Here's one thing I want to do. This man, I'm going to now take my time to decimate his arguments, but I'm warning him now. And you better listen carefully. Anytime you attack, don't be upset when I embarrass your prophet and your deity because you went off topic because you can address the topic. Now let's talk about deception. Since you ran because you were afraid of my arguments, I'm going to decimate your arguments one by one. In chapter 3 of your Quran, chapter 3, verse 55, your God is called Khairul Makarim, the worst, the greatest of all deceivers. He makes even Satan look honest because your God is a wicked liar and a deceiver. In chapter 8, verses 43 to 44 of the Quran, your God is so impotent and powerless, and he's such a wicked demon, he had to lie to your prophet in a dream, making it seem to your prophet that the people at Badr were less than, less than they were because it says, had he showed them to you as their actual number, you would have been afraid. So talking about lie, your God is the most wicked wicked, evil, imposter, deceiver, he makes Satan look honest. Now you want to talk about more lies? Your God sanctioned your prophet in chapter you're, 4 verse You're 24. using Quran now. No, no, one Quran. second. Hey, hey, I, 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 I didn't let Sam interrupt you. I didn't let Sam interrupt you. So let him, so why let him respond. Why is he using Quran? Why is he using Quran? Why why you're asking Quran? why? This is a debate I about, this is, Bible, is a debate. Right? This is, this is a debate about, quiet. This is a debate about the prophethood of Muhammad. He's quoting the Quran. Your arguments, uh, I mean, if you get to go off topic and talk about Matthew and Mark when we're talking about whether Muhammad's a prophet, no, then did, obviously, obviously he gets to quote the Quran. Christianity could- keep yelling? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sam. I'm sorry. You keep yelling, I'm gonna embarrass you. You don't know who I am. Don't cut me off. Listen, chapter four, verse 24, to show how wicked and evil and moral your God is, he says to your prophet that married women, <clears throat> married women are unlawful except those whom your right hand possesses. So according to Sunan Abu Dawood, number 2150, Disgusting. your wicked, immoral prophet said, when you take a woman captive who's married, you can rape her and then sell her. It doesn't matter if she's married. So if you want to talk about evil, I will really embarrass your prophet and your wicked God. But on top of that, in chapter 4, verse 24, and chapter 5, verse 87, Surah Al-Maidah, according to your hadith, your prophet treated women as whores. He treated them as prostitutes. He called it Zawaj al -Muta. So I'm going to ask you, if a Muslim came to you at the time of your prophet and said, your mother who's not married, I want to do muta with her. I'm going to marry her for three days and pay her money. Would you say, oh yes, alhamdulillah, praise be Allah, brother. This is halal from Allah that you treat my mother as a whore. But that's what your prophet did in the name of your God. So don't ever go to the Bible attack it because I'm going to expose your prophet. But now let's come back to the points. Let me now decimate your points one at a time. The reason why I quoted 1 John chapter 4 is because you quoted it. You quoted it to show that Muhammad is a prophet. When 1 John chapter 4 shows that your prophet is an antichrist, a son of the devil, what did you do? Like all Muslims who can't defend their fake prophet, you attack the Bible. So let me now show you what 1 John chapter 4 says again, because you lied to the audience and said, Paul made it up. No, it's the very chapter that you quoted that shows that John, whom you quoted, who now buries Muhammad and destroys your book and shows that your God is a false God, he says in 1 John 4 verse 10, this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So John, in the chapter that you quoted shows, God sent his son to die for our sins. So you're stuck with it and it proves that Muhammad is a son of the devil, whether you like it or not. Now what about Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 when you said he's a liar? I just showed that your prophet is a liar and your God is the most wicked deceiver of them all. But let me show you where Paul got this from because you said you challenge us, challenge us. Let me read it for you. So just like you took your time, you went on tangents, I'm now going to destroy every one of your arguments by the grace of Jesus, Muhammad's God and destroyer. Isaiah 53, written over 700 years before the birth of Jesus. And we have a copy of Isaiah 53 that's about 125 years before Jesus in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and a look like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. 
Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord Jehovah has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people, the sin of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his soul an offering for sin, he will see offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many. My servant will justify many, and he will bear their sins right in your face, implodes on Muhammad, showing Muhammad is an antichrist. Isaiah says he will bear their sins, therefore I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors, transgressors for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So Isaiah with Paul says, your prophet is a son of the devil and antichrist and your God is a false God, glory to Jesus. And then you slandered Paul and you said that Paul said my lies, right? Let me now again embarrass you for misquoting Paul. Romans 3 verses 7 to 8. Unlike your God who says, Khairun makarim, I have the Arabic lexicons and the context to show makar means your God is a wicked deceiver. So hopefully you don't tap dance, because if you're going to get dirty, I'll get dirtier than you. But let me show you what Paul said about the passage you misquoted to your shame and humiliation. Glory to Jesus, he's delivered you into my hands. Glory to Jesus, because you don't know what you're messing with. Romans 3, verses 7 to 8. Someone may, might argue, like you, you slanderer of Paul. Muhammad wasn't even worthy to kiss Paul's sandals. Someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? He's saying someone may say that. Why not say as some slanderously claim that we say like you did. Paul just said you're a lying slanderer because liars accuse me of saying this and I don't say this. That's what they accuse me of. So you just got exposed again for shamelessly butchering the Bible, the very Bible that the Quran says you to judge your prophet and your prophet is condemned as a son of the devil according to this Bible. Let us do evil that good may result. Their condemnation is just. Now let me show you, Paul, why he's better than your God and Muhammad. 2 Corinthians 1.12. Now this is our boast. Our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves in the world, and especially in our relations with you, with integrity and godly sincerity. Unlike Muhammad, who says his God is the greatest deceiver. Unlike Muhammad, who prostituted women, treated them like whores, calling it Zawaj al Muta. Unlike Muhammad, who take, took married captive women, chapter 4, verse 24, and raped. Man, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And I think it's so absurd that Muslims will come around and they will tell you that they have the true word of God. And then in their scripture, it is disgusting that the Quran disrespects women and it disrespects people. It thinks that you can go and literally take a woman captive. It does not matter no matter what situation you are. You are never to take a woman captive. It literally thinks that a man is superior over woman. And that is just the moral problems I have with the Quran. When it comes to the theological true positions, it doesn't make any sense. The Quran clearly tells us that Allah gave the Bible to us. They gave the Torahs and they gave the Gospels. If we have manuscripts that we can date back before Islam even started, you cannot tell me that the scriptures were corrupt. It doesn't make any sense. The same scriptures that Muhammad had that he was referring to in the Quran, it, we still have. You guys quote it. You guys quote X it is you guys quote the Torah and you can prove the Trinity in the Torah you can prove that Allah is the greatest deceiver he is a deceiver he is a demon he is not God and I want to I want to see what you guys think in the comments below if you guys really think that you guys have any type of contradiction in the Bible or you think that the Trinity is it doesn't make sense let me know we could debate in the comments if you're new to the channel make sure you guys hit that like comment subscribe and I'll see you on the next peace